I am a nature hacker, and this is your world. Well, I just discovered something insane. I feel like I hit the jackpot. Um, I discovered the true cause of adrenal fatigue, and it's not candida. I repeat, it is not candida. So, um, first of all, I want to talk about how to diagnose yourself with adrenal fatigue. Um, the easiest way to do it is to um, basically monitor your blood pressure. If you eat a lot of uh, refined salt, your, if you have adrenal fatigue, your blood pressure will rise. If salt causes, if refined salt causes a rise in your blood pressure, um, then you basically have high renin okay which is caused by adrenal fatigue um, then what also you have is um, gosh, you have low um, angiotensin I believe and what that means is that once you start loading up on when you switch all your salt to Himalayan pink salt and you switch and you start taking a lot of potassium the reduction in angiotensin that adrenal fatigue gives you will cause your blood pressure to plummet. So for me when I started taking a lot of potassium and switched to pink salt my blood pressure went from like 150 over 110 to um, like 90 over 50. Okay so <laughs> that's a great um, test to see if you are um, if you have adrenal fatigue. So um, that's what will happen. If you have adrenal fatigue, refined salt will raise your blood pressure and Himalayan pink salt and potassium bicarbonate or any type of potassium will just plummet your blood pressure. That's how you can um, diagnose that. Another way to diagnose it is by looking at your DHEA cortisol. Your DHEA, if you have adrenal fatigue, your DHEA will be high and your cortisol will be low. I'm talking about primary adrenal fatigue, which means the adrenal glands themselves are affected or infected, as the case really is. So if your DHEA is high, your cortisol is low, and salt raises your blood pressure to sky high, and potassium plummets your blood pressure sky low, then you have adrenal fatigue. All right, now, now what is, so now that you know you have adrenal fatigue, what is the root cause of adrenal fatigue? Everybody says it's candida. And I thought this for a long time because I found that candida can cause some antibodies. Your immune system is fighting candida. It's making antibodies and some of those antibodies hit your adrenal glands and cause a little bit of um, um, you know, damage to your adrenal glands. But that's a very... Uh, indirect effect you know so it can't really describe how like our adrenal glands just get shot to heck you know it doesn't really describe that it's it's more of like yeah you might notice a teeny bit of difference but not really with the candida but i found i found the freaking i don't know what do you call it when you find something that's just like the freaking golden goose or whatever but i found this paper man and uh I had been I had been tracing my problems back to listeria recently. Before I thought it was all candida, but then I started doing more research and it's starting to look like listeria. And then I found this paper. Oh gosh, let me turn down my brightness. I found a paper that basically is the smoking gun that adrenal fatigue is caused by listeria. There's the name of the paper there. You can pause it and write that down. Um, okay, I'm going to take it away now. It's the significance of corticosteroid insufficiency in the mechanisms of toxicosis in experimental listerosis. All right. <clears throat> it's very complicated, but what it's saying is that adrenal fatigue is caused by listeria. That's what the title is saying. Um, let me read some important parts here. The infection of mice with listeria led to dot 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 um the near complete delipidization of the glom glomerular zone of the adrenal cortex 
Now, what the heck does that mean? It means that this bacteria completely destroyed the adrenal glands. Just destroyed them. Freaking shot them full of lead, man. Okay. The most... Okay, so... Which was indicative of the development of relative adrenal insufficiency. All right. The histochemical changes, so they gave listeria to these mice, okay? And they say that the histochemical changes um, uh, simultane occurred simultaneously with the maximum accumulation of listeria in the adrenal glands. They're saying that they gave listeria to mice and it just went hog wild to the adrenal glands. It just went into the adrenal glands, blew them the frick up like a suicide bomber and um, gave you adrenal fatigue. The administration of hydrocortisone, which is, uh, you know, um, cortisol, basically, um, produce a temporary decrease in manifestation. So if you're taking, you know, cortisol, be it licorice root or um, bovine, uh, you know, adrenal, adrenal glandular or hydrocortisone, and that's, that helps you then, um, you know that you're you have listerosis, you have listeria bacteria. The maximum protective effect was achieved with combined gluto, glucocorticoid and antibiotic therapy, which means that um, you have to kill the bacteria and admit or, administer some cortisol to help um, to help control the disease. But if you do too much cortisol, um, the it helps bacteria growth so you don't want to do too much cortisol so now we know the root cause of adrenal fatigue i mean this is millions and millions and millions of people i would say i mean billions billions of people on earth have this no one has i mean that this person the person who wrote this paper figured it out why didn't they come out and say anything Right? I mean, there should be, but maybe they didn't realize how big of a problem adrenal fatigue is. You know, that's like, you know, I would say 90% of us that have sought alternative treatments and, you know, started researching because the modern medicine isn't helping us, 90% of us come into natural medicine because of adrenal fatigue. So this, this is like our cure here. Well, it's not a cure yet. It's the diagnosis, and that diagnosis is listeria. Listeria is the most common um, in utero, which means in the womb, the most common infection babies get in the womb. So we've basically been like this since birth. Um, that's basically what's going on here. Now, what is also interesting is that... Um, this is probably related to reducing uric acid excretion. So, you know, if you have like kidney stones, um, things like that, backache, lower backache, that is probably caused also by listeria and also H. pylori, you know, acid reflux, ulcers, stuff like that is also probably caused by listeria. Okay. Because, um, it looks like cortisol might be required to help the body excrete uric acid in the urine and so if you're not excreting it enough in the urine um, it builds up and you get gout you get kidney stones and then then the uric acid if it not enough is excreted in the kidney then what happens is it gets excreted in the stomach and when you're um, actually you know what that's that's urea that's not uric acid well, I don't know exactly yet, so I will keep you updated on that. But um, listeria, the cause of adrenal fatigue. So the best ways to combat it, I mean, it's a gram-positive bacteria. Um, things like ginseng, you know, that have soaps, plant soaps in it, that's what kills um, gram-positive bacteria. Um, also, uh, juicing, like raw juice, because that has peroxidase in it. Peroxidase uh, seems to help kill listeria. Another another thing listeria causes is lymphomas, blood cancer, brain cancer. So that is from listeria. So it's all linked in there. So listeria causes um, 
blood cancer. It causes um, uh, gout. It causes kidney stones. It causes adrenal fatigue. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. I am the Nature Hacker. Subscribe and visit my website, naturehackerproducts.com, for leading cutting-edge products. Thank you. Goodbye.